on the trucks that is made here, and our technician that paints specialties. What makes us unique beyond anybody else at any other motor sports facility? Obviously our technicians and paint specialists, which are the best ones in the around the world, uh, is that we produce over 450 bodies a year. They're hiding it. Hands 
insomnia. So we do a lot of R&D because we're all concerned of safety. So everything's tested out, every product's tested out, make sure there's no issues with it. So like I said, number one concern on our end of it is always going to be safety. So there's, you got to take into consideration those trucks take anywhere from two to five Gs. So we want to make sure that zombie arm stays on there, doesn't fall off or do any damage. A lot of R&D done on that one. Lots. That is trial and error. We had to try materials. That's a great idea. Yeah, it took a lot of trial and yeah. error. Yeah. <laughs> Weird cat. Trial and error. Trial and error. Like I said, we're always safe and concerned. Yeah, you don't want to fall in the crowd and hurt it someone. But then you'll get a free arm. <laughs> How long have they been doing you to do? Uh, since the zombie came out, which is about five years now. Well, but you said they improved it being before the arm would fall off the year or whatever. It took us almost uh, eight months of okay. research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Nice to see you. Back way in the 80s when these things were big dinosaurs, slow, the loose springs, 
shocks like that, yeah. even the four shock hanging on this crack. That's what they come from. Now look what we're doing with this combo of the chassis and the containment seats. There's no way to do that. This is a good example of things that you have to do to get it done in Monster Jam. You have to build your own tools sometimes. <laughs> you just don't have the lever, the lever you need for the small. We've yeah. added up all eight shocks, total suspension travel, the cycles, over 18 feet of suspension travel. And the only thing that comes close to that in off-road would be a choke control. I'd still put it up to a choke control. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Cody. Yes, sir. Wow. I'm going to walk down here and we'll see the uh, <laughs> Flex tape. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. A lot of people don't realize that brakes are actually on the on the rear end. Because most vehicles would have the brakes out here, but we have such rotating mass that it's hard to make the brake actually isn't very effective out here. So this is a wheel restraint. It's not a brake at all. The brakes are right here. Uh, and it's geared down through here. I can show you guys a good example of the gear ratio. Uh, but for the drive shaft, watch out for this turn compared to this. 20 re revolutions of the drive shaft to one revolution out here. So when we're going 70 miles an hour in Vegas, you can only imagine how fast that drive shaft yeah. goes. And you can see the ring gear pinion through here, this nice little setup they built for us. Just for me to be able to show you guys. Wow. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Our technicians are the best. There's a triple effect series. Those drivers have to do something I never had to do. They have to jump on quads, yeah. jump in these, and they're racing three different vehicles. I did do one year where I raced the Rocket at the same time. They called it the uh, Rock Bouncer. Uh, but that's the most I've ever done. It's two days. <laughs> well, I, that might be a lie, too, because back in the early days when, uh, when I worked, we had the, a driver that couldn't make it, and I had to jump in the two trucks. So we got two trucks to a show by me changing seats. <laughs> but it's a different time now. Each seat is built for the driver, so I couldn't just jump in somebody's seat nowadays like we would years ago. Yeah. Uh, the ISP seat is built just for that driver, and they're measured for them. But yeah, he is. Uh, he has been training our technicians on this training truck. So this is something new that we got. What maybe two years ago now? Yeah, yeah, we got it finalized two years ago when we got it up and performing. And he's helped design a, a training program to where we have a beginner and an intermediate in advance for our technicians, which has been huge. Uh, another thing that sets Monster Jam apart from other Monster trucks, uh, we everything is built so that we can continually improve our drivers, our technicians, and, and it's all for the fans. We couldn't do it without our fans. So we got we constantly have to keep working on them. Anything you want to talk about this week? Um, I don't know. There's a lot. There's quite a bit of stuff, but uh, I don't know. Do you have any? Any of you guys got any questions about the trucks? Oh, I know what. Uh, Tell them about the transmission. So that a lot of guys changing the transmission, when they start out, it takes them about 30 minutes. But if you've been to a Monster Jam event, 30 minutes is too long. They might not make it back to freestyle. So yeah. Jim so, has worked out a program. And we yeah, we'll get about. we'll get the guys, and I do, a, it's usually a three-day program where I'll get the technicians in there, and I'll get three of them together in groups of three, and they'll start picking transmissions in and out. And then as they get comfortable and feel that they're up to <coughs> speed, that they can do it fast, then we have a kind of a competition to see if we can get it knocked down. And we go from that 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes when they start out, and we get them down to 11 to 14 minutes by the time they're running. And that's how you gotta do it. You know, you'll see a truck, one of the drivers will go out there and drive and do them stoppies and stuff, and the transmission will, will uh, fail. We bring it in the back, and then you see the truck come back out for the next event, which is about 11 minutes. So we're in the back uh, throwing wrenches, throwing transmissions. And, and they're hot too. 
Yeah, yeah. they're probably about so it's not just the you yeah. know, it's not quite the same as here. They're dealing with a lot of heat. Yeah, you're dead. They're probably around two about 250 degrees. Oh. Maybe hotter by the time we get them. If we get them right off the track, they're 250 to 300 degrees by the time you get it. So you got to be fast, but you still got to be careful of taking them out so you don't get burnt or anything like that. So yeah. yeah but so. we have all the protective gear to take them in and out safely and, and all that. So that's a huge that's a huge one. But that's what we do. You know, with everybody, they start out slow, and then we get them so we can get it done. So whatever breaks, we can get it knocked out. And Get it back out there to compete for y'all. So as far as corner reverse, you do the stoppies. Yes, sir. When, when I drove his truck, it, it was hard to go forward or backwards <coughs> quickly per se. You know yep. I mean? So is that changed because of stop wheelie, or they're actually jamming it forward back? No, nope, you are. This is exactly the same shifter as what they run in the trucks. Okay. On um, the drivers will grab a hold though, and they'll hold, hold that up. They'll forward. hold that piece up as they're okay. going, and they'll go from first to reverse, first to wow. reverse, first to reverse. So, okay. Here's. The, the way I did it, and I, my driving career was ending when they started these tricks, but when yeah. I was starting to do the, the reverse, in, I've had some wheelies where I was going beyond, and I would have it in reverse, a lot of people didn't know it, I already had it reversed before I landed, the way you, the way you do it, if you push at an angle, you'll fall into reverse, yeah. if you push straight, you'll go right apart, right. so there's little things, little things you figure out. Yeah. To help you. Yeah, there's a stop on the inside. And you can't see it, but there's a stop on the inside that sticks out. So you can go. Yep, so you just hold it. You pretty much when you go in, you just hold it right to the side. Yep, you hold up and hold it to the side, and it'll go to there. Now, I've got a question about safety. I yes, see sir. the fire bottle here. I, I'm thinking recent Devin um, or Gary and Digger back in New York. When there's a major fire like that, do you have it so that's going to disperse down onto? Uh, like a transmission fire or something like that because it, it, it seems like the fireball was just incredible and yeah. what can we do to stop that? We're still working on it. We're, we're working with a better system now through fire aid where that'll have <coughs> sensors to where when the heat reaches a certain temperature uh, sets off a sensor and it just goes automatically. But right now we have a, a pole cable in here. A driver's trap and knock on wood in my 16 years of driving, I haven't seen a driver that had to use that. Mm -hmm. our, our tech officials and safety crew have been there on time, you know, and either that or they've been able to jump out of there, like you've probably seen, they've yes. been able to jump out of there in time. But if we were ever trapped, we have this bottle is, is released by a cable and we'll fill it. Okay. We'll fill the cable and you can see the, 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 the right here? Yeah, you can see the, yeah, can see see the fittings. Okay. Yeah. You can see the fittings mm -hmm. that are connected to the bottle. Fittings are all around the cab. Okay. Yeah. So oh. when it does, so if something does happen and engulfs the chassis or engulfs the cage, that they can pull that fire bottle and it'll, it'll disperse. Stop. Yeah, they'll disperse. It'll give the drivers, you know, the time needed to get out of there, you know, or time yeah. for the or time safety to, efficient. Yeah. To get Kevin to. has said oh. he's learned to wear his gloves every time now. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, they made me do that years ago. I'm glad they did because I yeah. didn't like them either. For, That's a good thing. Stop, Willie. Really. Stop me. Stop me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, how about the oil, the motor, and the transmission? How does that affect the motor? Do you all worry about the staying up too long? Yeah. We do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, Tyler. Do. we definitely do do that, and that's why we put a restriction we put now on the new trucks that are being built. We put the low oil light. It's right straight in front of the driver. Now it's not off to the corner. It's right straight in front of the driver. And when they stand it up, we have an accumulator underneath that holds three quarts of oil. So when the truck does stand up, it'll it'll go it'll go low oil. The low oil light will come on. Then it'll dump the three quarts out of the accumulator, dump it into the engine, which will bring it back up straight down there. It'll dump. It's all on. So it'll dump it into the engine, which will put it back up to oil pressure so they can keep it up that long. And then once that light comes back on, um, they have they 10 to 15 seconds yeah. that that they are required, the drivers are now required, that they have 10 to 15 seconds as they're up there to stop the truck and put it back down. So you'll see it, and if you yes. watch on in-cabs, you'll watch them. The lights, if you watch a lot, you'll see the truck up like that, and you'll see the oil light come on, it'll go off, and then it'll come back on, and then you'll, if you watch, you timed it, it's time that they'll set it down in that period of time. Oh, because yeah. Tyler made the last before we started on the steel. No, we've had that for we've had it for years. For but, years, oh. yeah. But when we when we the guys first started doing these tricks, guys and gals, uh, we had a couple of engine failures. Yeah. 
that's when we, we uh, adopted the rule that if it comes on the second time, you have 15 seconds. Yeah. How do you recover the oil? The oil, it, the oil uh, once it bumps into the engine, the pressure builds back up when the truck sets back down. It builds it right back up. So it just constantly shifts back and forth. And in the transmissions, we're putting, uh, we're putting extra, add three quarters of a quart, almost a quart. <coughs> Into the transmissions now, and that seeming to help help out with that. So, yeah. And we worked with Cohen to figure that out and and to get all the what we needed to do uh, in that aspects of it. You guys want to walk down a little farther? Yeah. Well, hey, let's go over here to the uh, chassis fabrication while we're right here. I was wondering how Tyler Meninga and everyone does the moonwalks for like a minute or beyond. Yeah. Is that possible? Like, yeah. Yeah, you can. It just it takes a lot. They they push the envelope. Yeah, I know. About that. They're Definitely. still doing it. Yep, they still are. All right.